Hi everyone! Welcome to Visa Tui's One of the Month Club cooking demo for March. Today we'll be making an American classic, spaghetti and meatballs. Paired with our 2021 La America red wine varietal blend. Let's give it a taste. Ooh, that's nice. I'm getting nice notes of blueberry. A nice balanced softened tannin. Delicate acidity going on there. Definitely getting a nice earthy terroir. A little bit of an oaky spice. You'll notice that any of our hearty reds are gonna pair very well to this dish. Let's get to cooking. All right, so we're gonna use a, a famous technique from soup dumplings to uh, moisten up our meatballs and keep them nice and, and rich. So we're gonna take some beef stock, about half a cup. Yeah, we're gonna bring it to a boil real quick. We're gonna take a packet of powdered gelatin. To that, we're going to uh, add just a whisper of ice water, about a tablespoon, teaspoon, right around there. Just enough to kind of moisten it up. And what this does is it activates your gelatin. There we go. All right, we're at a boil. We're gonna go ahead and kill it. Powdered gelatin has been nice and hydrated. This will make sure that it gets fully activated and dissolves into our liquid. From here, we're just gonna whisk and stir it in. And then as we've killed the heat, we're just using residual heat to melt the gelatin together and just making sure that everything's stirred in and nice and dissolved. And we're gonna go back into our same vessel. And we're gonna let this set for about 20 minutes in the refrigerator. So now our gelatin is set and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dice it up and we're gonna go a very fine mince on it. Now this is one of my favorite techniques to create a moisture farce. And just a nice fine dice is what we're looking for here. It's gonna add a heap of moisture to our meatballs. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some basil puree real quick. We're gonna take uh, about one cup olive oil, about uh, 230 grams. We're gonna take one packed cup of basil leaves, fresh picked. We're gonna blitz these two together in a Cuisinart, but we have to go really, really fine on our basil. Uh, blenders are ideal for this. And what essentially we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little pinch of salt to it. And what we're gonna wind up with is a beautiful basil puree that's just gonna mold and meld right into our sauce. And it's a match made in heaven. I can't think of a better combo than basil and tomato. So we're gonna build our red sauce. We're gonna start with a little bit of a EVOO, a little extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna do about, about a third of a cup. And we're gonna take our minced onion, go straight in. And what we wanna do here is we wanna sweat the onion. And just until those cell walls break down and the onion will soften up very nicely. We don't really wanna brown the onion. We wanna make sure we're operating at about a medium, medium high heat. And we're gonna kick in just a little pinch of kosher salt just to help wick out some of that moisture out of that onion. All right, here we go. Now that we're at a nice good sweat with the onion, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our shallot in, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cook it until it loses its color and becomes translucent, nice and sweated. And shallot is by far one of my all-time favorite aromats, and it just absolutely makes this sauce what it is. From here, we're gonna add our red chili flake, just a pinch or two. That's gonna bring a little heat to the sauce and a little bit of a mouthwarming action to it. So we're toasting it alongside our aromats just to create that flavor. All right, now we've got our chilies toasted, our onions and shallots sweated. We're ready to add our tomato paste. We're gonna add this for body and for flavor. And we're just gonna caramelize it against our aromatics. It'll infuse itself into the flavor. We'll get that nice cooked tomato flavor. Most important part is you gotta caramelize it. Most people don't cook their tomato paste and wonder why it tastes like fresh raw tomato. So if you notice, starting to get some fond here. We're gonna add our red wine vinegar. And as we add it, we're gonna stir and really scrub the bottom of that. We're trying to get all that flavor up and into the vinegar, or you could swap for wine. We did about a half a cup or 127 grams. 
All right. We're going to kick in our tomato puree. This is an Italian varietal tomato puree that they jar and can in the summer months when the tomatoes are at their peak. Now our sauce is marrying together. So from here, we'll take our basil puree that we made earlier and we're gonna kick in roughly about a cup. So as this just simmers and mellows, that's just gonna absolutely make the dish. All right, so from here, we're just gonna let it simmer on low for about 10 minutes. It's gonna get a real nice flavor going on. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a panade. A panade is just basically a soaked breadcrumb. Now you can use panko breadcrumbs, but I prefer a panade. So we're gonna take about two cups packed white bread with a crust cut off. And we're gonna soak that half a cup of heavy cream, mix it together, make sure it's well soaked. Gorgeous. And that's just gonna help keep our meatballs super moist alongside our gelatin. And we're gonna come back in 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes. Our panada has soaked up all the moisture out of that heavy cream. We're gonna add it to our mixing bowl. We're gonna give the panada a second just to mix up. And we just wanna kinda of break it up a little bit. Next, we'll add our diced gelatin. Just kick that in the side. Next, we're gonna add our ricotta. We'll kick in our onion. We'll add our egg yolk. We got four all day. That'll be our binder and our glue. We're gonna add our minced garlic. We'll add our fresh chopped thyme. And our fresh minced parsley. And finally, we're gonna kick in our salt, our pepper, our dried oregano, and our ground fennel seed that we did earlier. And we're just gonna combine until this is thoroughly mixed. We're gonna go ahead and stop for one second. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of our pork, and a little bit of our beef, just a pinch from each, just to kind of temper it in a little bit and give us something for the rest of that meat to bind to. And the rest we're gonna hand mix. Gorgeous. So we're gonna take the rest of our beef and our pork, and we're just gonna hand mix it in. And just hand mix. All right, so we've hand mixed in the rest of our pork and the rest of our beef, just so we have a nice tender mix. We're gonna take a half sheet tray a little bit of a sprayable canola. Just a real light layer, just to ensure no stickage. We've got our oven preheated to 450. We've got our hot water to drop our spaghetti on. We've got our side sauce ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and take a scoop. I'm using a two and a half ounce. All right. Beautiful. These smell fantastic. I cannot wait. So now we're gonna go through, we're just gonna form them real quick. Make sure your hands are lightly oiled. And we're just gonna form them into a beautiful little ball to go off into the oven. All right, we've got our tray ready to go. We've got our oven preheated and we're gonna go ahead and give them 15 minutes at 450. Let's take it from there. Let me go drop our pasta real quick and we'll be right back. So I'm coming back to where the cupboard was. Woo. All right. We just pulled our meatballs. We got a really nice breading around the outside. He's gonna eat really nice. I'm excited. Let's play it up. 
So we have our cooked off spaghetti, hot and steaming, ready to go. We're gonna pre-toss it in a little bit of sauce before we plate out. It's very important to always toss your pasta in sauce. Do not skip this step, it is vital. So we'll use about half our sauce and we'll reserve the rest for plating out. All right, and we're just going to toss and coat, coat those noodles. And you'll be amazed how much the pasta will soak up the sauce this way. All right, so we'll take our pasta, nice little pile in the center, nice little nest, and take the rest of that sauce. And you can go right in the middle. Take our meatballs, and we're just gonna nestle them right into our nest. Gorgeous. We've got some freshly grated parm. Go ahead and give it a nice douse, you know, the Parmesan. Nice salty richness. We have our chiffonade basil from earlier. And we're just gonna drizzle a couple of strings here and there. Give us some nice herbaceous character that will tie our meatballs right back into our sauce and make the whole dish sing. Just a little olive oil, just a light little drizzle. Bring a little moisture back to the plate. There you have it. Spaghetti and meatballs. Bon appetit. And now, my favorite part of the film. Let's give it a taste. Ah, if you look at that, just that beautiful meatball. All those herbs in there, the freshness. I can smell the garlic in the air. Mm. That's amazing. You get the richness of the meatball. You get the nice flavor of the alliums, the garlic, the onion, it sings through. You get the nice bright acidity of the tomato. And then you get the, the spice of the, the fennel and the black pepper. Ties absolutely perfectly into La America. It's gorgeous. Like I said, this would also go really well with any of our other hearty reds, any of our Syrahs or Zinfandels. Until next time, salute.